after the recent event. Okay, let it be. Let me start. So the thing is, I wanted all of you guys to go and execute these two activities. One is the creation of the Git profile. Second one is Databricks account creation and start working the Databricks platform. The use cases what I have given with. These two activities I wanted you guys to start do by this week for sure. Okay, let it be. So the first activity is Git profile creation. So basically when you go to github.com right or, or whatever the link that i have given you guys you can go to that link and get the sign up completed by giving your uh, username and all this information maybe you can go into the kit after that you can find the home page of the git comprised of multiple things maybe let's not worry about projects packages the star pair stars or followers or creation of the project and all this and all, let's not worry. The projects we can create, we can collaborate the project with the team members, that and all you don't have to worry for now. All I wanted from all you guys is, for what reason I'll tell you as well. You may not give much importance for this. There are two reasons. One is, <clears throat> in order to understand how the software de development life cycle works in an organization, right? We have to know about this GitHub for understanding two things. One is, how can I collaboratively work with the people across the world, across different geographical locations they're staying? How can I work with them collaboratively? After I completed my work by end of the Indian time, how the US people can take that code and work further? That is collaborative, maybe like environment that we can create in the workspace. Second reason is, what are the code that I'm having in my machine? If I lose my machine, my code should not be lost. So I need to have some code repository where I have to safeguard my code, the given version of the code. Third reason why we have to go with the GitHub is, right, the, it, it is a hub for performing Git operation. What is Git operation? Well, I'll talk later. There is a hub where I can keep my code with the older versions maintained. I am just doing some modification in my code. I want to know what was my yesterday's version, day before yesterday's version. I want to understand that. All these are the primary reason behind for collaborative work environment, for maintenance of our code, for retaining the versions of the code and understanding the code versions, or comparing the code versions, evaluating or uh, doing the review of the code versions of previous code and current code. For maintaining all this, we go with GitHub, okay? Primary reason behind. Please keep it aside. Why I'm asking you to create an account in Git and I'm asking you to, I'm going to ask you guys to post some code inside the Git repository, especially the cloud code or uh, the Spark SQL code and all what you're going to develop. I wanted you guys to post some of the code in the Git repository by creating the proper repositories and folders. Keep it aside. All this you are supposed to do. But for now, what you're supposed to do is, and, and the third reason why I'm asking you to use Git is, you're going to show, hey, I'm using Git this year, previous year, previous year, you can see here, right? I'm using Git for a couple of years. At least I'm using Git for a couple of years, but you guys at least can say for the past few months, I'm having some common GitHub repository for my own I created. In my name, I created Muhammad Ifman, I created. My own Git page I have. I have a lot of codes uploaded there or are uh, committed there. You are going to tell that. Or you are going to mention in your resume saying this is my GitHub URL. So the interviewer may go and Open the GitHub URL and quickly see hey, what you have kept over there. Some code what you have tried over there. What and all you have tried over there. He'll try to understand about your strength and weakness. Or maybe the strength by saying, oh, these are all he have already tried out of curiosity, out of interest. That is what needed in the organization. Not a born talent or an intelligent person is needed. The organization needs a person who have a right attitude towards learning. Even though we feel hungry, you are sitting and listening to me is, that is what is needed by the organization, right? Nothing else is needed by the organization. How much um, you can do, that is a different story. If you have interest, you can do the things, right? That is what the key idea. Okay, now you have to first create a repository. Repository means a, a common folder, a, a G drive. In a G drive, we create some common folder, right? It is like that. So create a new repository, first thing, right? The repository name can be WE43 repo. Like this, I'm creating one repository. Okay, let it be. 
it's a public repository so everybody of you can can see the code what i'm going to upload here i'm going to commit here i'm going to push here any name you can give for it read me file which contains some information about what is what this repository is for what reason and all this the license i'm going to choose apache license apache 2.0 license git ignore file we'll talk about it later for now keep it aside branches and all we'll talk about it later i'm not teaching you what is git i'm helping you just create one repository for today just create a repository like this you got a repository created in this repository you can upload your code maybe you can upload your code directly from the databricks notebook from the cloud environment from your on prem uh, computer from your pycharm repl pycharm id everywhere you can upload the code or commit the code to the github repository we have lot of tools available as well git command line interface is there git cli is i mean git uh, desktop is there lot of tools are available to export and import the code between our git repository to our local and local to the and and vice versa so i wanted to just upload or commit this code whatever i have written or whatever we have written it till yesterday maybe like till today maybe today we have completed up to this part right i wanted to share this code to you guys we wanted to work collaboratively what i can do is i can take this code from here maybe i don't have to do this activity we can go with vcs version control system here we can go and add the git as our i mean git project directly here here we can go and directly say hey take this code and put it into git we have that option available how much important the git you are able to understand here slowly by just getting it as a first cut so i am going to take this code manually simply i am going to do this activity by not using any command command line interface or any other uh, uh, mechanism or plugins i am just directly going to keep this code into our git hub so i'm taking this code and i'm going to put this code into the github repository this refined code this this modified code today what we created i'm going to simply drag and drop the code into this github repository i'm going to say what hey um a spark core program up to 0505 like this i'm creating this code i'm i'm uploading this code into my github repository so we can use this use some commands to perform this operation okay sorry i'm i'm to add this file right so um spark code program i'm going to add that file here drag and drop that file here maybe how do you go and add this file basically by clicking on add file option what i have over there right i did not click to that okay commit the changes so if this code is going to be available in my github repository you guys can go to this repo and you can download that code from this repo you can click on this code and say download as a zip file so all my code including the license information and the readme file will be downloaded the readme will be helping me typing something here what, what this repository is used for and all this i can create like a widget here the readme can be created like a widget here we can create some widgets like this widgets means we can create some sort of like mar markup uh, widgets we can create so so it will be shown in a bold fashion or in a simple way like this and all it will be shown okay let it be. It, it it is a, it was earlier bolded right now it is showing in a not not much bolded so we are going to see something like a markup language and all we are going to learn which is a very simple language for creating notebooks that that will so do separately so now you see here i got this code committed into my github repository so i am just going to have some modification made in our code i mean i'm i'm talking about all this in a minute of time guys i'm going to teach you guys later on all this in detail as well the github related thing but but quickly i'm just talking about this i'm modifying this code i wanted to see the version of what i modified the priorly and the currently right so you want to see that you can go and see the versions of that code right maybe so i'm just deleting this line deleting this line 
and I'm I'm just upload. I mean again uploading this code. So code add file upload the files. If I click on this, it will again ask me to upload the file by dragging and dropping. So removed first print statement like this. Something I'm just mentioned committing this change. Now what happened? The old file got replaced with a new file. This is just now I have, I just removed the first print version I'm just keeping here. Now when I go here, you can find into this code, you can find the version history. Now I don't have that first print. You want to compare between the version. Hey, the initial commit what we have made, that version contains what code? That version contains including the print. The recent version what Irfan have uploaded, right? Remove the first print what he have given, right? That contains what? That that got this line removed. It is showing in red color. Version control, collaborative work environment. And very importantly for the interview side, if you start create this repo and if you manage this repo with some code add, added on it, whatever you guys are working, it is good for you to add it in your resume. When, when we do the resume building, this is going to help you. With me in this team or not? What I'm speaking. Why this is important? Whoever did not create the uh, Git account, please create it considering all this factor. Okay? Keep it aside for now. Now, now I'm taking you to the Databricks environment very quickly. Five more minutes. I too feel hungry. Okay? Um, here, the data, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to talk in detail about this Databricks, but for you guys to work for now, we are supposed to do a couple of activities. What are the activities? One is we need a cluster. So if you go here, there are multiple options. If you go to the home page of this Databricks, they are giving us multiple options. If I click on this home page, home page, it is giving multiple options. The option number one is I can create notebook and manage notebook for querying data, for processing data, for doing some ML operations. I can bring some data to from our local computer or from anywhere else, which can be managed, which can be processed by our notebook environment, like a Jupyter notebook what we created, we can create it in the Databricks distribution. Databricks is a, a company who is which is maintained by the founder of Spark. That guy is mainly promoting Spark. So here, what this guy is helping us to achieve is, who, what is the name of that guy, guys? Matai Zakaria. That guy have created this company. He's a founder of this company. What he's telling to the people across the world is, hey, don't worry too much on working in Spark. I provided you, you, you even something called the Databricks Assistant. You type what you want, he will give you the code. You can go and use that code. You know how to plug and play the code and develop the application. That's what that that level they are going actually. That's a different story. We are we are going to say in our interview, the very first question asked is, what distribution are you working? You have to say either I'm working in Azure Databricks or I'm working in Dataproc, I'm working in HD Insight, I'm working in EMR, I'm working in Cloudera, Hortonworks, anything, you have to name it. And we are going to see most of this. We so far worked in the on-prem, plain vanilla Hadoop cluster. The same thing they are also creating here. The only difference they are making is they are giving a bit better look and feel. So here we are supposed to concentrate on notebook, data import activity, these two. The DBT, I'll talk about it later. Maybe it's a, it's a tool, data build tool we have. Okay, keep it aside for now. So first of all, I'm having, I mean, I, I can go to the home page and see all this, whatever they are supporting to us. On top of this particularly, you have something called workspace where you can go and create notebooks. We can see all the recent works, uh, workspace notebooks and all what we have managed. That is a different story. We can search for something we wanted to find here in this environment. That is also a different story. But we have something called catalog compute and workflows. Catalog is nothing but our Hive Meta store. Catalog is nothing but our Hadoop HDFS file browser. Catalog is nothing but our Hive. We go to the catalog, we can realize all this. What and all you are realizing, we can create a table, which is nothing but a high table. We can go and browse for data, not in the Hadoop file system, in the DBFS, Databricks file system. Compute is what? Compute is nothing but the cluster we can form. Hadoop cluster we were forming, right? They are allowing us to form 
cluster of single node. So you can create or click on the create compute. In the compute, you can first go and click on the create compute. Form a cluster called insert as cluster or whatever. And they are providing us an option for creating a spark cluster, as I told you, right? What cluster manager they might have used here, guys? Can you tell me? Since they are providing us a spark cluster, not Hadoop cluster, Databricks is promoting spark cluster. They are telling a hey, come out of Hadoop. Don't use Hadoop. They are using standalone cluster manager in the background. Or they may use Kubernetes also. Because these guys are immediately spinning off the cluster and giving it to me for two hours alone. After two hours, it will be automatically killed. Or, I mean, after after um, uh, two hours of idle period, right? They are they are going to kill this cluster. So they don't want to give for free of cost uh, cluster for a very long time to us, right? So they are killing it after some time. So we are creating a long term service cluster. Long term service cluster. It is free, totally hundred percent free. All you need is a mail ID to create this account. You are getting it for free of cost, this cluster. I am creating this computer cluster of 15 GB, 16 GB, two cores of processor, one Databricks unit, one one computer we are getting with single core, single node cluster of two cores of processor with 15 GB of RAM we are getting for free of cost. Only driver is running, no worker. Everything is running in a single computer, they are telling. If one, we don't give you a multi-node cluster, okay? Like a local, local mode they are giving, okay? We are creating this cluster, let it be, let it run. Once this is created, we can go to the UI as like how we are seeing in our on-prem. We can see the master UI. We can see the worker UI. All this information we can see over there. Let it be created, guys. I'll take five more minutes, okay? Let it be created. What we are supposed to do here, I will be, I'll be telling you. So first, after you create the cluster, the very first thing you have to create the cluster. Secondly, what you are supposed to do is you are supposed to load some data into our Databricks file system, as like Hadoop file system, you can use Databricks file system. It is background, in the background, they are using Hadoop kind of file system in the Amazon Web Service environment. They are not, they are not showing all of this to us. It's not, it's needless. Let them use any computer, any cloud platform or anything. I don't bother. All I need is, I want to store some data into a file system. Because Spark says I only provide you Processing flame framework, no storage framework. So Databricks is telling, don't worry, fun. We have some storage framework created in the background. As like HDFS, we call it as a DBFS, Databricks file system. If you know Hadoop file system, you can work in Databricks file system without any change, you know, any difference. So they are telling what is fun. Go to the catalog. You are you will be seeing one small tab called. DBFS tab, but but when you go to the for the first time into this environment, you don't find that. So for that, what you are supposed to do is you have to go to admin settings. I given this sandal in my notebook. I am going to show you that notebook. Wait for a while. In the admin settings of this user, you find advanced. In this advanced, all the way when you go down, you'll be finding DBFS file browser, Databricks file browser. You can enable this. After you enable this, you come to the catalog. You refresh this page, you refresh this entire page. After you come to the catalog, you'll be finding DBFS browser is available. Like a Hadoop HDFS file system browser. In this, there are two folders, file store and user directories there. In the user directory, you can find what folder by default available is. You don't expect this, right? What folder guys? So if a person knows how he can work in Databricks, can I say like that? If a person knows how to work in Spark, can he work in Databricks? If a person knows how to work in HDFS file system, can work in this? If a person knows what is a cluster, he can work in this. Databricks is something new here, no, right? They're giving a look, better look and feel. All we have to practice is how to work in this look and feel. That's where I'm telling, directly go and try this case. With me in this case, what I'm speaking. So I can go and create a file in the file store location. I can upload some data into this file store location. When I upload, I can create a folder, whatever I want. If one folder, something like this I'm creating. And I'm going to upload some data from my Linux, from my local computer or whatever to play around with some data. Maybe I'm going to just play around with some data from my local computer. I can upload very quickly. Customer data I have, maybe like just I'm going to upload this data. 
first data I'm going to upload. Just this data got uploaded into the folder called Irfan folder into the cust.txt data set. Done, guys. Our work is done. So when, when I'm going to give you this use case or I sent you this use case already, you are going to take the data of video log from this location, from the drive, G drive we have, Google drive we have this data, YouTube videos.tsv file you are going to take and upload like this over here, first activity. Then what you are going to do, you copy the path, copy this path, and go and start create a workspace. In the workspace you are going to Go to the home directory, you are going to create maybe a folder. In the workspace, you go and create one folder like Irfan Spark Learning or something like this you can create. Inside the folder, you are going to create the notebook. Create a folder, create a notebook. Create a notebook. Notebook is like a, our, our Jupyter notebook. First activity, what you are going to do is RDD1 is equal to far context dot sc dot text file of just I'm writing this directly for your reference. RDD1 dot count. So you don't have to learn anything specific here. All you have to do is this activity. So the cluster is available now, what we created. I'm going to run this to see the result, how it works. So it's bringing the data from whatever the DBFS data I loaded, it is bringing and showing me the result of how many records it contains. I don't want to see the, see the header value. What I can do? I can either go with zip fifth index or I can go and say, take the rdd one dot first, store it in the header value, rdd one dot filter off, Now we collect our count and see the result. We are not going to find the data with header. Done, guys. This is what I wanted you guys to do over here. But not in this way. I, you don't have to put all this effort even. What all you have to do is, I have shared you the Databricks notebook to you. All you have to do is what? You have to go and Maybe import a notebook. How do you import a notebook? You can go to the workspace. You can go to here, right click and say, hey, I wanted to import a notebook of what Irfan have provided to me already. Where he provided in the drive, right? So you're going to the location where I have provided the notebook. This two more minutes. Okay, I'm finishing. Um, so Databricks notebook, what Irfan have shared, Python core scenario, PySpark core scenario, IPython notebook, Irfan have shared, IPython notebook of the plain template he shared. I'm going to drag and drop this IPython notebook over here. It, it supports IPython notebook, R notebook, SQL notebook, Python notebook, Scala notebook, Databricks combined notebook. We can, we can compress all the Databricks content and put it in one notebook also. I will be providing you Subsequently, import. You got a beautiful notebook imported here. I mentioned all the points what I so far discussed with you guys over here in a beautiful fashion. After try importing simple use cases and all this, I created markdown for all you guys. I put a lot of time and effort to create these markdowns. All you have to do is what? Go and click here the plus plus button. They maybe like leave these two two lines. You are uploading the data to this location. All this you already did. All you have to do is what? Create an RDD, DBFS underscore RDD to read the above data, what you have uploaded. All you have to do is this line of code you have to type here. You have to plus, click on the plus. It will be opening a Python based, maybe like a paragraph. We call it as a paragraph. Python based paragraph it will open. You go and say, create an RDD called DBFS underscore RDD. Rather than Hadoop RDD, you create a DBFS RDD. 
do some operation on it. I am not stopping you doing this operation. Any operation, whatever I asked you guys to do, create an RDB. Split the data using tab delimiter. Split, split the data using tab delimiter. So go and perform. RDB2 is equal to DBFS RDB dot map of how to split using the tab delimiter. You have to go through maybe online also. This is what we I wanted you to do. All these operations I wanted you. Will you be doing this case? Working in this database environment? Very simple. But can you do this? So you can see all these paragraphs or this markdown widgets. So how to create this markdown widgets and all, I'll talk with you guys separately. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting a lot of time and effort to create a lot of notebooks for you guys. Okay, let it be. We will we'll be dealing about it subsequently. This is one activity. And subsequently, you, you understood about how to create cluster, how to uh, upload some data into the file, how to upload or create a table in a database. Hive table, talking about Hive also here. So I'm creating one table called cluster data, maybe. Um, I wanted to just upload the data into the file, upload a file from an outside environment, or I want to use the DBFS location itself where I have already uploaded the data. Here in the file store, I uploaded some data, right? This file itself I wanted to use for consuming the data, maybe anything you can do. I want to load this data into a Hive table. For loading the data into the Hive table, what methodology we can follow? Two methodologies we know. One is we can go and use some load commands or some methodologies to load the data into the table. Second methodology, create the table and load the data. Second methodology, use Spark itself to load the data. So here they're asking me the same question. It's fun. Do you want to create a table in the UI with the table name, column name, data type, and all these? Or you want to Create a notebook to create this table. When I click on the create a notebook to create this table, he's giving me the complete Spark code to load the data into the table. He's giving me all the options. The file type alone, CSV format, I have to change. This is a Spark SQL program they are creating and giving it to me. First row is a header, true, because first row is a header in our data. So they are automatically taking care of all this to load the data into the table. This is the table name I want to store the data. Cust underscore txt. So when I execute this complete program, I'm not running this, I'm not creating this code. They, they are creating on behalf of me. They're running this code. If I want to schedule this code to run, I can use workflows, but this is disabled in the community edition of Databricks. Done, guys. Done. I got a table created here. You see now, go to the catalog. You can find there is a table got created soon. Maybe this got completed. Yes, this got completed. Now we can see here in the catalog, the table got created. Explore this table. You got the data loaded into this table. Schema, sample data, hive table guys, nothing else, hive table. Cust underscore txt is the table we got created. Data got loaded. Without, with any, with no time, we got it achieved. But it got achieved through a Spark program. So you can try loading the data into another table, right? By dragging and dropping the data from the file location also. Anything is good, I'm, I'm not stopping you. You drag and drop this custody data. And, and you say, create the table using UI not using Spark program, not using Spark program. So automatically it will allow you to mention all this option. First row is a header. In Hive we create a table, right? Like this, he is allowing me to perform all this operation. Column delimiter is comma, row format delimiter, field statement by comma. Everything, he'll, he'll, he'll do the work. He's showing me the, the format, the column names, data types, everything it is going to show here. Choose the data type what you want. Accordingly, you can manage. Done, guys. Done. You go and create the table over here. You create the table. That's it. Work is complete. Load the data. Done, guys. Any questions?
sorry sorry for taking 15 more minutes too much of time i have taken um, but uh, i mean like uh, please consider this and work on this uh, data bricks uh, notebook i have already shared to you chat to you guys in our drive please make use of that and work on this guys i i, I took no time to explain this right try to understand the progress and what you are making if you if you guys are able to work on some exercise on this you'll feel very much comfortable guys okay please work on this and we'll meet on next week saturday any any questions team uh irfan uh, i have uh, some uh, issues one with second, the second uh, sarangmani so uh, team uh, who are wanted you guys can please drop off i know like we are on top of that and uh, your family may scold me okay um please go ahead okay please go ahead and uh, we'll be seeing lot of much much interesting th things than this this is this is just a starting point but all we need is first the knowledge that's what we were spending most of our time on gathering right these things are just look and feel okay but the background is what you are realizing here if i take you directly to here you'll be feeling like hey it looks great but what is happening in the background now you know what is happening in the background the meta store tables are getting created lot of things okay keep in your mind guys okay fine thank you all guys we'll meet on next saturday yes go ahead sarangwani Oh, I just wanted to check the whether my PySpark installed uh, successfully or not. I'm just trying to okay, yeah, uh, yeah. put. Uh, share your screen. I'll help you. Okay. Thanks, guys. Have a good week ahead. Yeah. Okay. I'll share my screen. Please. So the recording, why I recorded, is for sharing to all of you. Okay. That's the reason.